Hello, this will be the Apex clothing tutorial utilizing our crash test dummy with the medium resolution trench coat. And we will be using Maya 2011 for this tutorial. So if we go and we open up our file and we sort of rotate around the character, we, we obviously we have a fully textured character. You can see we've got nice uniform quad geometry um, throughout the character's trench coat. And if we switch over to the, the channel box slash display layers, um, you can see we've got a, a layer already set up for the coat and one for the crash test dummy. So you can turn these on and off at will to suit your, your workflow. So if we go ahead and we, we play the animation um, straight up out of the box, we've got a little 180 animation and we can see the, the standard deformation uh, without any apex clothing added to it. Something else you're going to be doing a lot um, when doing this sort of thing, testing animations and working on cloth, is, is taking the character in and out of bind pose. So one of the things that you can do is go up to the animation skin menu, hold control shift, and go down to go to bind pose. And this is going to go ahead and add a button to your shelf or whatever shelf you're on. So go ahead and save your shelves. And um, now that we have the character in bind pose, we can move on to the next step. The first thing that we want to do is add clothing to the trench coat. So with the trench coat selected, go up to the main menu, PhysX, Apex Clothing, Create Clothing. This is going to go ahead and add the clo Apex Clothing node to our character. Now let's go ahead and play the simulation so we can see what the uh, default cloth behavior is. And as you can see, the, the cloth uniformly falls about 5-10 centimeters. This is due to the default max distance. Max distance being the amount uh, the, the distance that a vertice is allowed to travel during the clothing simulation. So let's go ahead and put the character back in the bind pose. And with the trench coat selected, let's go to the attribute editor and we'll scroll over to our clothing node. And under material attributes, go ahead and click the paint button and this is going to take us into the paint tool. This is the same as all of your other Maya paint tools, it utilizes the same system. So the first thing we do is set the value to zero and flood it. This is going to give us a nice clean slate to work with. And then for the base of the trench coat, we want to have nice wide fluid value. Uh, the coat's going to need to be able to move however far the legs move, so we're going to use a big value of about 120 centimeters. Also go ahead and turn on the auto fit range. This is going to keep our, our black and white gray scale um, in sync with whatever our highest value is. So what we're looking to do now is basically block out about three different values of color, three to four values of color throughout the, the base of the trench coat. So about up to the slit, we've painted up to 120. And now we're going to go ahead and change our value down to 60, and we're going to paint the midsection of the coat, both the inside and the outside. And just uh, heads up on some Maya shortcuts. If you hold B and middle mouse, that'll change your brush size. If you hold N, that'll change your value. So now we're going to change our value to 30, and we're going to paint a third block of color. And then finally, we want to get these last two spans before the edges start converging. We want to paint those at a value of 1. Now, since this is a pretty dark color and it blends in with the rest of the trench coat, we're going to go ahead and turn on our visualization. So under the paint visualizer, change that to wireframe and enable visualizer. You can change the scale of the noodles to make it uh, better to look at. And then let's go up and paint these top two rows. And now that we've got uh, our trench coat nice and blocked out, um, we're going to go ahead and change our brush type to smooth, uh, make a big brush, and then let's go ahead and smooth all this out. So now you can see we've got a nice smooth value gradation from the base of the trench coat up to about the, the rib cage. And if we go and we turn on our paint visualizer, 
Um, we can see that our noodle display is also showing us a nice smooth gradation and we can of course change the scale of those noodles once again. So we can see we've got plenty of movement. And now if we play the simulation, we can see that the inside of the coat is coming through the exterior of the coat in some cases. This is because the inside and the outside of the coat are simulating uh, separately from one another and they're not quite latched together to create that illusion of, of thick cloth. So let's go ahead and put the character back in the bind pose and we'll move on to our next step. For our next step, we're going to be working with latch to nearest. And the first thing that we want to do is make sure our geometry has the correct topology. So from the display menu, go down the polygons and turn on face triangles. We're then going to go in the wireframe mode and look at how the front side of the coat uh, compares to the inside of the coat. And specifically, we're looking at these face triangles. We want to make sure that they're going the same direction on the interior and the exterior. If they're not, you could get some issues where you could see some of the folds penetrate one another from the inside to the outside or the outside to the inside due to these edges going different directions. And you get a little bit of a crisscross artifact. So it's essential to make sure these are going the right way. Next, I'm going to go over and I'm going to pick my coat from the outliner and then go over to the clothing node and hit paint. Then we're going to change our attribute selection to latch to nearest. And just to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to turn the joints off so, we, so we're just looking at the coat. With our value set at 1, we're going to go ahead and just start painting the inside of the trench coat. And what this is going to allow us to do is latch the interior verts to the exterior of the coat. Um, Apex is going to do this by projecting these latched vertices to the nearest triangle on the other side. So this is going to give us the benefit of instead of simulating 2,000 vertices, we're only going to be simulating the outside of the coat, which is about 1,000 vertices. Um, there is an expense to latch to nearest but it's not as expensive as simulating an extra thousand vertices. And this also gives us a nice uniform thickness to our cloth. Next thing we want to do is just make sure we have the edges painted. Here I accidentally painted some of the exterior, so I'm just going to go ahead and touch, touch some of these vertices up. And then we can go ahead and zoom back out and get a, get a nice look at what the final latch to nearest paint looks like. So now I can go and I can turn my joints back on. And then we can go ahead and play the simulation. And as you can see, the interior is latched to the exterior of the coat. So now let's go ahead and reset the simulation and put our character back in the bind pose. Now we're going to add a ragdoll to our character so that our, our cloth has something to collide with that is a accurate representation of the underlying character. So now what we want to do is go over to our layer editor and we'll go ahead and turn the body of the character back on and take it out of reference mode. We're going to put the coat into template mode because we really don't want to select it at all during this process and it's going to allow us to, to see the shapes a little bit better. So with the body selected, go up to the physics menu, ragdolls, create kinematic, Ragdoll. This is going to give us a special little ragdoll locator, which you can move anywhere in your scene. And it's going to bring up the attribute editor. So let's go ahead and go down to the joints rollout. And we want to remove whatever, whatever joints that aren't appropriate for this clothing simulation. Since only the bottom half of this trench coat is simulating, we really only need the base of the spine, the pelvis, and the legs. So we can get rid of the arms, head, clavicles, upper spine and any ornamental bones that we may have. Um, it's arguable that you may want to keep hand shapes in case the, the arms or the hands are going to swipe by the trench coat and, and, and activate some, some cloth movement. Uh, in this case, we're not going to be doing that. So now if we go over and we can look at our character, we've got a pretty accurate representation of the underlying body mesh. Let's go ahead and take our, our ragdoll locator and move it somewhere more appropriate, like over the character. 
Now keep in mind, convex shapes are six times more expensive than capsules. So what we want to do is select all the joints in our joint rollout, go down to the regenerate rollout, change shape type to capsule and simulation type to kinematic, and go ahead and regenerate the selected joints. This is going to give us capsules, which are much more efficient. They don't quite represent the, the underlying character as much, but in most cases, th this is going to work out really well for the simulation and for the, the end product. Something else that we can do is we can go in and we can adjust these capsules um, to more accurately reflect the, the artist's intent. So usually what I'll do is I'll go over to my outliner and I'll select the joint uh, that I want to adjust and then I'll go over to the rigid body node in the attribute editor. And you can see here that each capsule has an endpoint that you can adjust independently. And you've also got a radius that you can change. And at the very top there you see you've got a select transform button. And if you hit this, this is going to automatically go to the transform node in the viewport. So you can use Maya's translate and rotate tools to adjust the shape. Now I'm going to go back to the ragdoll locator and I'm going to select mirror rigid bodies from its attribute editor. And what this is going to allow us to do is stick in, um, in our case, underscore L and underscore R for the naming convention for the left and right side of the character. This is going to go and find all the bones and it's going to allow you to, to mirror one side of the character to the other so you can get an exact representation for your character. And here we have our, our final ragdoll after it's been mirrored. You can see it nicely encompasses the underlying geometry. Go ahead and turn our coat back on. And something else you're probably going to want to be able to do is to be able to try different ragdolls and see what works best for your character, or maybe even share them between characters. Um, so what we're allowing you to do is to save out your ragdoll to a .rag file. And here's our simulation playing with the ragdoll. And we can go ahead and reset the simulation and work on the attributes. Now let's go ahead and set the attributes for the trench coat so that they more accurately reflect the behavior that the artist is intending. With the trench coat selected, go over to the attribute editor and select the, tr the trench coat node. Go ahead and expand the material attributes rollout and set the gravity scale to 0.9. We want to keep this on, on the heavier side. Stretchiness can be left at zero since we don't want the coat to stretch. And we want to control the bends a little bit, so we're going to keep that at a relatively low value as well. Now for compression limit and compression stiffness, we can leave those at their default value. If either one of these has a value of 1.0, they will not have any influence over the simulation. And what compression limit and compression stiffness ultimately do is allow the edges to, to collapse in on the cloth so that the, a larger piece of cloth can condense into something smaller and tighter to the character. That's not appropriate for this case, so we're going to leave them at their default values, which won't have any influence over what we're doing. We can go ahead and change friction to a value of 0.3 and dampening to a value of 0.1. We want to keep these values pretty low as well in this case. Let's go ahead and change surface thickness to about 1.5. Now what this is basically saying is that the clothing will collide with the capsules at one and a half centimeters away from the shape. This is important because the edges that connect the vertices need to have enough room that they don't penetrate the capsule shapes as well. So in this case, one and a half is a good value. We're also going to set self collision at one and a half centimeters. And then if we go ahead and check the self collide checkbox, uh, we're going to allow the cloth to collide with itself at a radius of one and a half centimeters. Now we also want anti-stretch turned on and we're going to keep that at a low value of somewhere between 1.1 and 1.05. And this is going to keep the cloth from stretching in the vertical direction due to gravity. And as you can see, we've got a few extra rollouts in mesh attributes and advanced attributes. We really don't need to change anything here. We can simply rely on our material attributes. So let's go ahead and play the simulation. Now let's go ahead and have a look at our final comparison of the trench coat. On the left here we have our initial character with just skin deformation. 
And on the right, we have our trench coat with Apex clothing at about 1,000.